So we've determined the density in place of the soil on site with our nuclear gauge and our sand cone. However, we don't know what the actual maximum density of this soil is. We have nothing to compare it to. We can't determine a percent compaction if we don't know how compacted a material can get. In the field, if we don't have a laboratory determined proctor or maximum dry density, we do have one test that will aid us. We call it, we call it the one point proctor test. Essentially, it takes a bunch of curves of known soils and we plot that out and it'll tell us approximately what that soil's maximum dry density is. Here's our mold that we have right here. We have calibrated in the laboratory the volume right here. We'll fill it up with soil. Uh, we're going to do this in three lifts and we're going to give it 25 blows with a five and a half pound, uh, five and a half pound proctor hammer right here. And then we're going to strike it off level, get a weight on it, and we've already got a moisture on this material, so we'll just go from there and we'll plot it out. We'll get our weight. We're going to record that. Put our collar back on. It's really important for the technicians who perform this test to give it equal lifts so that each lift gets the proper compaction throughout the entire plug that we're going to have in this mold. Again, this is going to be in three equal lifts. We're going to have a soil that needs to be approximately near the optimum moisture, and we're going to determine that by filling it. The material that came out of that hole was pretty close to optimum, so we're just going to go with where it's at right now. Take our five and a half pound hammer, give it 25 blows. Go ahead and add material for our second lift. And to the third lift. We're going to want to make sure that once we're done with our final compacted specimen that it, it goes above the top of the collar or goes into the collar so that we don't have any final depressions that would alter, artificially alter our test result. All right, we have our compacted specimen. We're gonna strike it off flush so that it fills the volume that we have calibrated for right here. Uh, typical volume is gonna be 0.0333, uh, which if you wanna translate that from volume to percentage, it's 3.33% of a cubic foot's volume. We'll strike it off. We're going to fill any voids with fines. Now, a lot of times technicians will mash it down in there. We're not trying to add any material. We're trying to replace material that, that uh, sloughed off through the strike off process. All right, we've struck off our material. We've cleaned our base plate and we're gonna go ahead and get a weight on it.
Having a known volume and the known weight of the soil in the mold, we're able to determine the wet density on this material. And in conjunction with our moisture content, we're gonna be able to plot that out and determine this, is, this soil's maximum dry density out in the field without a laboratory proctor. We're also gonna to need to know the moisture content of this to be able to plot it out and find our maximum dry density. We're going to extrude the plug from the mold. Loosen that up. We'll also, too, at this point, be able to observe how equal or unequal our lifts are. It looks like we had pretty good lifts on this one. You'll be able to see the, the top is very compacted on, on the top of a lift, and then you'll start to see voids in that soil as you get down to the bottom of the lift, and it'll pick up really, um, really compacted, so you'll be able to see that um, stratification. We're gonna cut our sample in half. Discard that exterior, and then we'll take our moisture content sample from the center, and this is where we're gonna obtain our 20 grams for our calcium carbide test, or we'll obtain a minimum of 300 grams for an oven dry sample.